if there's one thing that Dallas Mavericks fans understand is that this team will never get the respect they deserve from the national media. And over the summer, we saw this team go out and get Klay Thompson, get Najee Marshall, get Quentin Grimes, get rid of Tim Hardaway Jr. And without moving a single first round pick. And for whatever reason, Tim Bontemps put out an article earlier today that's got Dallas Mavericks fans fired up, just completely heated, because we were left off their list of teams that had the best offseason moves. We didn't even make their list of the worst teams to make offseason moves, which is fine, I guess, but for their short list of teams that they think made the best best moves out of every team in the league we weren't even mentioned so in this video we're going to take a look at this article we're going to break down some of their selections try to be less biased and, and give them the benefit of the doubt and then i'm gonna give you my opinions on how i feel the dallas mavericks did this offseason but how's it going everybody my name is marcel martin this is mavericks digest bringing the latest news on everything mavericks related and before we get started with today's video we're at 12,767 subscribers we're so close to 13k if you want to be up to date on everything mavericks related if you want to miss out on a single thing that we do make sure you subscribe i'd appreciate it greatly we're so close to 13k but like I said in the intro, there was an article put out earlier today that's got Mavericks fans fired up. They got them heated. They got them mad. Big mad. Because there was an article that came out that lists the top teams of, of free agency as well as the bottom teams of free agency. And before we take a look at that, the Dallas Mavericks made a lot of good moves. Like I said in the intro, we didn't have to use a single first round pick. We were still under the first apron. And we were able to get Klay Thompson where he chose the Dallas Mavericks, taking less money to come play in Dallas alongside along alongside Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic instead of going home to LA where he's from where he grew up a Lakers fan where his dad played and won a championship with we got Klay Thompson to choose Dallas and not only that we were also able to find a trade suitor for Tim Hardaway Jr. in which we got back Quentin Grimes. We also were able to sign Najee Marshall right before the news even broke out that we weren't going to bring back Derrick Jones Jr. The disrespect not only to this organization and the players, but the disrespect to Nico Harrison is just absurd. Like he hasn't been putting in work year over year over year since he got here to improve this roster time and time again. But like I've said before, you can't really tell people you got to show them. And hopefully this season, the guys that we went out and got definitely showed not just the media, but the entire NBA world that Nico Harrison put on a masterclass this summer. It was able to facilitate trades to build a team that could actually compete for a championship. But enough of all that. Let's go ahead and get into the news, guys, because this right here, Tim Bontemps tweeted out saying new ESPN story with the NBA's offseason virtually over our annual offseason survey is back taking a look at the best and worst summers for teams across the league individual transactions overall trends and more now I went ahead and I shelled out the ten dollars for for an ESPN plus subscription so I could read this article so you don't have to waste your hard-earned money on the atrocity that is this article but if we just dive right into it who had the NBA's best offseason of all the voters, Philadelphia had the most with eight votes. New York Knicks had five, Oklahoma City Thunder at three, Boston Celtics at two. And going off of this real quick, I think the Philadelphia 76ers may be a little bit overrated. Yeah, you got Paul George. You got a couple other role players as well. But I don't think that means you had the best offseason where you still have to make out the second round, which you haven't been able to do with Joel Embiid. So... But like I said, you can't tell them. You got to show them. Let's see if they show us, right? Uh, second place was New York Knicks. I understand Mikael Bridges was a big signing, although you did give up like five first round picks for him. I understand. But hey, that definitely makes them better. They're able to re-sign OG and Anobi. So I get that. Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, I understand that there's a little rivalry between the Dallas Mavericks and the OKC Thunder. But to give them their credit, I think the Oklahoma City Thunder had a better offseason than the Knicks and possibly even the, the, the 76ers because you got Hartenstein to add size and add length and just to bolster your forward and your center position, but you also got Alex Caruso for nothing. You gave up Josh Giddy, the, the guy who was a problem in the playoffs, who was unplayable, was, was a negative for your team, for one of the league's best on-ball defenders, just any, any guard's nightmare in Alex Caruso, and you gave up nothing for that? I think, I think that alone deserves Oklahoma City Thunder, at least the second place out of any list of the team's best offseason. So only three votes and coming third place is weird. And then Boston Celtics at fourth. I, I don't know what they did other than just overpay a couple players. But let's go into their little synopsis, right? They said there wasn't a lot of significant movement this summer, and it's no surprise that the top three teams that earned votes made the biggest headline-grabbing deals. 
Paul George to Philadelphia, Mikael Bridges to New York, and Alex Crusoe to Oklahoma City. In the end, it was a 76ers offseason makeover. They also added key role players in Andre Drummond, Caleb Martin, Eric Gordon, and Reggie Jackson. That received nearly half the votes after turning the most cap space in the league into the one max free agent available this summer in Paul George. So, okay, let's take a look at that because you got Andre Drummond, who you can argue is past his prime. He puts up empty calorie stats where, sure, he can put up a double-double. Does that contribute to winning? Most likely it doesn't. You get Caleb Martin, which I think was a good pickup. It was very odd that he took less money to come, at least what they said, that Caleb Martin took less money to go to, to the Philadelphia 76ers than staying in Miami. Maybe there's trouble in paradise. Who knows? But I'll give it that Caleb Martin's a pretty good pickup. Eric Gordon, who I really do like as a player, is a little bit too old to really say that this helped your team make it to a finals run or whatever have you. I like Eric Gordon. He's just a little bit too old to really have that much of a factor. And then there's Reggie Jackson, who I do like, but as of late over the last few years, he's kind of slipped out of being a starter, more like a backup and possibly while in Philadelphia, will he back up Tyrese Maxey or will he be a third string guard? I don't know. They definitely made a lot of moves. Was it the best moves? I mean, you also got Paul George. Congratulations. I, I mean, I think all Mavericks fans know exactly what happened just this past summer in the playoffs against the, against the Los Angeles Clippers. You want that Paul George? You got that Paul George. You want someone who really doesn't play the best of defense, who, yeah, he can, he can go out and score. He is still a great player. No slander here for, for Paul George. But you definitely overpaid him. Was like a $200 million contract for Paul George. All I'm saying is with all that cap space that you no longer have, I hope you make it out the second round. But to say the 76ers had the best offseason, I'd argue that the Oklahoma City Thunder had a better one. I'd also argue that the Dallas Mavericks had a better offseason. But I'll save my bias for the end. But to continue with this horrible list, let's take a look at some of the worst teams. The, who had the NBA's worst offseason? And on this list, they got the Denver Nuggets with six votes, Chicago Bulls with five, the Clippers with four, the Lakers with one, the New York Knicks with one, and the Detroit Pistons. I'm sorry, New York Knicks with one? Didn't you just say that New York had five for that's okay. Let's take a look at this. And Detroit Pistons had one. They go on to say that similarly, the majority of the votes went to three teams. Denver, after seeing Contavious Caldwell Pope leave as a free agent to the Orlando Magic. Chicago, after trading both Caruso and DeMar DeRozan and not getting a first round pick in either deal. And watching the San Antonio Spurs get the best asset, a 2031 pick swap from the Kings in the DeRozan deal. And the Clippers letting George leave for nothing in free agency. So... I think Denver, you know, being number one as the team who had the worst offseason, I think is a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think it was that bad. Yeah, KCP did leave. They just went out and got um, Russell Westbrook. So, I mean, I don't think that really makes up for it, but I don't think that they had the worst offseason. The Chicago Bulls, it definitely looks bad. You let go of Alex Caruso. You trade Alex Caruso and get nothing in return but Josh Giddy. Congratulations. And you were unfortunately forced to trade DeMar DeRozan because your team's just falling apart because I don't know who's in charge. Is it the GM or the owner? I don't know. I have no idea. The Clippers should be number one. The Clippers should be number one, and for one reason only, is because you gave up everything you possibly had to get Paul George all those years ago. You gave up SGA, who's now an MVP caliber player. You gave up too many draft picks to even mention, and then you let him go for absolutely nothing. Not even a sign and trade, not even trying to get him back on a team-friendly deal. Apparently, from the reports, that Paul George actually didn't want as much as he got from the Philadelphia 76ers. Apparently, Paul George wanted exactly what Kawhi Leonard was, was, was offered and what Kawhi Leonard signed for, but the Clippers thought that, ah, I don't think you're worth it, Paul George. We're going to give that money to the guy who's never around, who's who's never healthy when we need him to. But you, Paul George, now nah, we can't give you that much. So the Clippers do look, lo do, do look like a foolish organization, giving away everything that they had for Paul George and getting nothing in return when he leaves is blasphemy. I don't know what that team's going to do, but hey. They got Derrick Jones Jr., right? So I guess it's not too bad if you're a Los Angeles Clippers. And if we look just down the street to the Los Angeles Lakers, yeah, they should definitely be a little bit higher as having the worst offseason. They haven't even made any moves. They did nothing. The only thing that they did was they signed Connect, who I think is a really good player, a good rookie. I think he'll, he'll develop fairly well. And then you got Bronny James, who you strong-armed the entire draft to not pick because you wanted him in L.A. Oh, and let's not forget, you also signed J.J. Redick as your head coach, and you failed to get any other assistant head coaches of notoriety to 
joining your roster. Now, I'm not trying to bash the Los Angeles Lakers, but let's call a spade a spade. That was arguably the absolute worst organization out of all 30 teams. During this offseason, during the summer, they were the worst. The Lakers, you take the cake. And if we pull the list back up, they got Detroit Pistons down there. The Pistons are the Pistons. They just have to draft well. They'll be fine. They also got um, Tobias Harris, so it can't be that bad, right? And then the New York Knicks, which is very weird. They got one vote as the worst offseason moves. I think there's a salty, I don't know, Nets fan over there, someone who doesn't like the Knicks. I have no idea, but that's that's very weird. Maybe because of those multiple first-round picks from Mikael Bridges, I could see that. But I think the Knicks had a pretty good offseason. But with that being said, the Dallas Mavericks were nowhere on this article. I had to do control F and search Dallas. The name did not come up at all as if the Dallas Mavericks are just an afterthought. Like we, we just made the NBA finals and people forgot about us. And if, and if so, that's absolutely fine. But I'm here to remind people that the Dallas Mavericks had arguably one of the best off seasons and not even just across the league, in our own history as the Dallas Mavericks organization, this was one of our best off seasons. Like I said before, we get Klay Thompson, a Hall of, a future Hall of Famer, an NBA champion, and five-time All-Star. We got him for three years, $50 million. He took less money to come play in Dallas than to go to LA, where he's already in California. It's not a big move. Your dad is, a, is an announcer for the Lakers. He won a championship there. You grew up a fan of the Lakers. But we convinced you to come to Dallas because we're here to win. We're not here for all the tabloids and the drama and the oh LeBron James and oh his son's here no we're here to win and that's why we got Clay Thompson the moment we knew that there was something fishy going on between Derrick Jones Jr. and Clutch Sports we quickly got Najee Marshall we didn't sit around and wait it was announced before Derrick Jones Jr. signed with the Clippers that we were signing Najee Marshall. Nico Harrison was quick with it. He had a backup plan for the backup plan for the backup plan it was like how is that not a great move and then I think arguably the icing on the cake was trading away Tim Hardaway Jr. And before I finish, thank you for your for your time as a Maverick. There were definitely a lot of great moments, but towards the end, I think we can all agree it just didn't work out. I don't want to sit here and say I never liked Tim Hardaway. I sure as hell loved watching him just chuck 10 threes a game where he used to make some of them right but towards the end it just wasn't a good fit but we were able to trade tim hartway jr and get quentin grimes a young 3 and d guy who i think is going to impress a lot of people the dallas mavericks in my opinion had one of the best offseason moves out of the entire league if they're not number one they're top three and they're not going to be three but let me know what you guys think. If you had to grade the Dallas Mavericks on their offseason moves, what grade would you give them? Because I'm giving them an A+. Plus. And obviously, this is Mavericks Digest. You can call me biased. That's totally fine. But I'm giving the Dallas Mavericks an A+. Plus. But I'd like to see what you guys think down below. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for making this far into the video. Make sure you check out our Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. Consider becoming a channel member. We are doing a giveaway. The winner will be announced this Saturday. And the only way to enter our giveaway is to become a channel member of any tier. But till next time, y'all take care. Drink water. Peace.